return be dropped? Should it be dropped? Yes? Why? If you go back to velocity profile, you should know that velocity has three components, Vx, Vy, and Vz. In this case, Vy would be definitely zero. Is Vx zero? If you cannot see it by now, you are in big trouble. It is zero in this case, okay? So if it is zero, the whole term here becomes zero. You don't need to consider convection. In other words, you may say that there is no convection in x direction. Convection takes place in z direction, okay? Conduction, on the other hand, takes place in x direction. So that means this term becomes zero as well. Vy is zero. For this, Vz is not zero. Vx here, on the other hand, is zero. So as a result, you get combined flux equal to minus k dt by dx minus mu vz dvz by dx. Again, I can write it down as total differentiation because I know vz is function of x only. All right, up to this point, any question? Can you catch up? All right, so next step, we got expression for combined flux. Then we can just plug it back into our shear balance. You get minus K dt by dx minus mu vz dvz by dx equal to c1. Then I'm going to use the velocity profile that we derive from momentum transport equation convert this Vz to be Vx, I'm sorry, Vb x over b. Okay? What about this term? We can simply use this equation differentiated with respect to x. So this term becomes Vb over b, right? Plug it back in, you get this equation. Viscous heat. Viscous heat is the conversion from work of flow of the fluid into internal energy, causing temperature to be increased for the system. Viscous heat here will be important only in two scenarios. First, when your fluid velocity is extremely high, or secondly, when your fluid has very high viscosity. Okay? The first case when velocity is extremely high, that's obvious. The second case when fluid has high, velo high viscosity, the example is when you consider extrusion of, let's say, polymer 
through some kind of very small holes. Polymer would have extremely high viscosity, so when somehow you try to push them towards small holes, that force can increase the temperature of polymer. Right? So from here, I'm going to take x to the right hand side and t on the left hand side. And I'm going to keep C1 here because there is no way we can solve for C1. There are too many variables. We do not have enough boundary condition to fix C1 at this stage. So we must move on. Okay? If you integrate it, On the right hand side, you have C1x plus. Although this one looks complicated, but all of them are simply constant. So integrated is no problem. Plus another constant C2. So if you do like this, you should see that we need two boundary conditions. That means you need to know temperature at two points in our system. And we do. We do know at temperature as x equal to 0 and x equal to b. Okay? So take that as a boundary condition. At x equal to 0, temperature is T0. This one is T0. This one becomes 0, 0. That means C2 is equal to minus KT0. Right? Then you have second boundary condition at x equal to b, t equal to tb. Just replace that. So then you can get C1 from second equation. Plug it back into our equation here. You get temperature profile. Okay? If I do that, I will get this equation. Okay, this equation was obtained by plugging C1 and C2 back to the original equation. Then you can just take C0, T0 from the right hand side to the left hand side. 